I walked all the way around a planet in No Man's Sky. Now I know what you're thinking. Are you really that bored? Yes. I was wondering how long it would take to walk all the way around a planet while playing No Man's Sky because my imagination is very limited. Now, instead of googling it like a schmuck, I decided to do my own science. I knew it would take at least five minutes, so I laid out a couple of ground rules. I wasn't going to sprint at all, and I would only use the jetpack to get me out of sticky situations. I interviewed quite a few planets for this position. I don't know, this might be too pretty. But in the end, I decided on this beauty named Bubblicious. Mostly because it had no oceans, because I didn't want to do any swimming, it had fairly flat ground overall. And it did have sentinels, but they weren't aggressive. They're actually quite cute. Okay, I'll see you later at the bake sale. More important than any of those reasons, though, was the fact that it looked funny. There were a few challenges that I knew I was going to be facing. I couldn't just press K on the keyboard, which is auto walk in No Man's Sky, and just let it go while I was sleeping because I was going to run into walls or holes that would halt my progress. This meant I had to do it while I was awake and paying attention during the 9 hours per day that I'm conscious. I didn't really consider it too much at first, but it was going to be very hard to stay on track and make sure I was going in a straight line. Sometimes I would use the other planets as a reference point, sometimes I would ask the wildlife. But in the end, I would just glance at the GPS coordinates on my visor. Another big consideration was the fact that I did not want to get lonely. I'm so glad I brought Dutch Blitz, which is a great card game for at least two or more players, oh my god. I made a nice new building and a land bridge as a marker for when I finally came around the other side of the planet. It was still nighttime when I decided to begin my adventure because I was just too excited to wait till morning. Alright, here we go! Within 15 seconds, I was bored. After a few minutes, I realized just how many obstacles I was going to end up running into. Rocks on the ground, stubborn bubble creatures, and invisible force fields. More on that later. But 10 minutes in and I was completely mesmerized. It almost made me wish that I had done this challenge in VR, until I thought about it for more than a second and realized how horrific that would be. At 26 minutes in, I faced my first big obstacle, and it was a tough one. I don't know how I survived that. Ten minutes later, I fell in a hole. I got a little hurt, but I was still pretty brave and only cried for a couple of hours. At 54 minutes in, I had my first instance of clarity. I started to feel the synchronous breath of the collective conscious of the universe. It was really obnoxious. Would you stop breathing so loud? After a full hour, I considered different ways that I could cheat. But then I looked at my cat and realized I would lose a large amount of self-respect, and I can't spare very much as it is. Shortly thereafter, I was reminded why I was doing this. It wasn't for me. It certainly wasn't for science. It was for all the little gamer pigs out there who thought they wouldn't be able to accomplish a Herculean task like walking a very long distance without actually going anywhere. I started setting down some save points just in case the game crashed and also to make sure I was traveling in a straight line. At a minute 50, I was stuck for a short while when I may or may not have been acquiring nacho fries. After a couple hours, I started doing math, which should worry everyone in my vicinity. All right, so it's taking, it's taking 24 seconds to travel 100 units. That means... Hundred and it's like uh, 360,000 units for for average planets or large planets. So that's 24 seconds, uh, 34, uh, 30, 30, 360, 2400 time, divided by 60 and then divided by 60 again. So uh, should take 17 hours total. Oh my God. At three and a half hours, I could not take my eyes off the screen. It was just so pretty and repetitive and losing brain cells is everyone's favorite hobby, right? At 
After six hours of walking, I took my first break. As soon as I paused, I realized how on edge I had been the entire time because I felt like I couldn't look away from the screen for more than 30 seconds without ruining my progression. Thankfully on day two, it was much easier to jump back in. But 24 minutes in and I faced my most beautiful and terrifying sight. rut -row. There were quite a few times when there were some very tantalizing distractions. Oh, look at those eggs. They're whispering to me. Come here, dirt. I want to be your friend. I want to be your friend too. On the second day, four hours flew by. After a total of 11 hours overall, I surmised that it was nighttime on this planet more often than daytime because the bubbles refracted the light so much that it looked like there was no light because it kept getting bounced around like a gerbil running through a tube so fast that it looks like a blur. It, it made sense at the time. Thankfully, every time I felt like I was losing my grip on reality, I was met with a beautiful vista like this. Twelve and a half hours in in the game, um, had a, an, an, an interesting uh, dilemma. Is this normal? Should this be happening? I made a special base computer to commemorate half a day of walking on planet Bubblicious, so I named the base Vitamin B12. I don't remember anything from day three. With four hours remaining, I was getting antsy. I could finally see my destination over the horizon, but I had to summon in starships to use as my save beacons, because apparently you can only have five save points per planet, which would have been nice to know about earlier. When it said only one hour left, I could not believe it. Unfortunately, it said one hour left for more than an hour. My final save point was right in my path. It was uh, just uh, so perfect. It really hit me when that final countdown began. That's when I knew I was going to make it. Finally making it back home, I, I didn't know what to think. I was accomplished, but no one was there to congratulate me with a box of Fig Newtons. So naturally, I went to the store and bought some. If I had to do it again, I would definitely add markers at important milestones along the journey so I always had a guide on the horizon keeping me on track. I would maybe change the rules to allow sprinting, and above all, I would not do it again. In the end, it took 25 hours, 43 minutes, and it wasn't the destination that was important about this, because I had already been there, that, that was where I started. And it also wasn't the journey, because that was just walking. Really, the main reason I did this was f for, uh, for, uh, huh. Thank you for your time and attention. You're just the cutest. You're just the darn cutest. Stop being so cute. It's too much. Everyone is gonna get jealous. <laughs>